Good morning, folks. We've got a number of science updates to hit today. We're also watching our star continue to build to sunspot maximum. The last 24 hours on the sun included continued sunspot production, the crossing of more southern coronal holes, and a stealth CME that came off the northwestern limb. We're going to get a better look at all of this and start with the solar flaring. The X-ray flux shows a continued rise of flare production. This is due to not only the active region on the south, which continued to develop throughout the overnight hours, but also, top right above the Earth size scale icon, another sunspot group was born up north. We've got more coming in behind the eastern limb, and the spotless days appear to be through for the time being. Quick look at the solar wind shows we remain inside a large coronal hole stream, but despite its size and its lasting for more than a day, it is moderate only driving only minor geomagnetic unrest, which you see as the yellow bars bottom right. Quick peek up here to see, specifically, nothing. There wasn't a coronal component to the stealth CME that left this region yesterday, but it did go up and away. Last little note, if you look at the end of the sequence, you can see there's more popping coming from the incoming active region. We'll have eyes on this heading into tomorrow. Let's start the science news with the only one not directly related to the Earth. We are looking at protostellar jets, and they have discovered that they are indeed ubiquitous. The jet model applies across scale in the cosmos and works in the lab as well. Upon the energetic ignition of the object, it peacocks along both its north and south polar axis. Some keep the jet their entire lifetimes. Up next is one for those baby steps in the marathon towards the right direction of climate science. Looking more closely at how the sun affects the ionosphere, and this is a critical aspect of the short-term solar forcing of weather. The global electric circuit is tied to the ionosphere, and the ionosphere's working by all electromagnetic aspects of space weather is then applied directly down through the atmospheric system. For veteran observers, there's little more than a nod of the head at yet another study of the distress to the environment during the last geomagnetic excursion. This one, tied to Gothenburg and the Younger Dryas climate event, and also getting confirmation that the distress came even faster to South America than it did to North America, a surprise given that the northern continent was utterly obliterated during the last event. Let's go to the oceans and add sprinkles to our long-standing coverage of the ocean circulation mastery over the total climate. Here, they're not only suggesting that previous climate swings were stronger than what we're seeing now in the Holocene, not a favorite discussion for global warming proponents, but also they identify the thermohaline circulation as the key component of warm interglacial states and suggest it's in trouble looking into the future. Now last but not least, cosmic rays. We have felt very alone in our calling out of the modern grand cosmic ray maximum. The data is clearly at record marks for everything except the neutron monitors, which by the way suggest that Earth's weaker magnetic field is joining the weaker solar output of the previous cycles and creating the surge in cosmic rays. But whatever the reason or share the blame, we're there. The cosmic ray grand maximum has begun, and that's contributing to the lightning records, increased likelihood of severe weather, increased cloud albedo which will begin to cool the earth in the coming years, modulated magma viscosity for explosive eruptions to help that last one, and the human health effect of cosmic rays, which are known to span across the physical and mental aspects of our well-being. No turning back here, folks. You can close your eyes to it, but it's coming all the same. We greatly appreciate your support. If you have Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, cosmic rays are found throughout and its effects on human health are found in Chapter 6. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.